Okay, let's take a look at those snowfall totals on the Euro here, and wow. The Euro says BAM for Oklahoma, Texas, especially into the Ohio Valley in Northeast. This is, uh, wow. This just keeps getting more and more interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. And yes, today I'm wearing glasses. It's a temporary thing. I had some problems with my contacts this morning. I just want to go ahead and apologize for the glare. I literally can't help it. I have too many screens in front of me. Should be back with my fake eyeballs tomorrow. Okay, now we are still tracking a historic cold air mass making its way into the south, sparking a very memorable winter storm that will likely cause a lot of problems with heavy snow, ice, and blizzard conditions, especially up there in the northwest. Portland, Oregon, Seattle. Seattle, Washington are seeing snow right now and in the upper elevations up here, we're talking about some big time wind and snow totals in the feet, okay? This is all gonna move down into the Rocky Mountains and then eventually down into Texas and it's gonna go east from there. This is what we've been talking about, guys. This is our massive winter storm, our record-breaking storm that's just causing all kinds of stuff. I mean, look at this map. All the counties that are shaded are under some sort of advisory watch or warning. This is probably the most active map I have ever seen. This is crazy. Look, we've got winter storm warnings all the way down down into southern Texas and then literally a winter storm watch all the way down into the most southern part of Texas, which is <laughs> absolutely insane. Of course, the entire state of Oklahoma is under a winter storm warning. And then these winter storm watches go all the way up into central Ohio. And I do believe that these will be continued on to the north and east as we go into the future. Right now, as we speak, we're dealing with an ice storm in central Virginia, Richmond, Farmville, all the way up to Washington, D.C. and into the central part of the Delmarva Peninsula. Ice storm warnings are in effect here because some people can see up to a half inch of ice, maybe a little bit more. And yeah, I think we should mainly focus on this storm that's coming up right here for Dallas, Oklahoma City, Lubbock, Amarillo, this area right here. A very rare and possibly historic winter weather event is about to unfold here. So let's check it out on the weather models. Okay, the first thing we're going to take a look at is the NAM model, the North American model. This is a shorter range model. We can take a look at a higher definition view of exactly what's going on here. So let's do that now. Here's our storm that we're looking at right now on radar above my head. By the way, above my head at the main top, if you want to follow along with the date and time, it's constantly displayed at the top up here. So watch it as we push this on into motion. Here we are into 7 p.m. tonight. Our storm from the Pacific Northwest is starting to move down, okay? Little disturbance over here is going to continue to go north, and we're going to have a little bit of a short wave that tries to spark up tomorrow and maybe bring a severe weather threat to parts of Florida. But look at this. Here's our Arctic air and our gang of high pressure systems that's squeezing this storm down to the south, and that's what's going to set up our Big storm for Texas. Let's keep pushing this into motion. 1 a.m. tonight, it's finally snowing in Texas and Oklahoma. And then as we keep going, it breaks out initially as an area of sleet and freezing rain down here in southeastern Texas from Dallas, maybe all the way down as far south as Houston. But the back building snow showers behind there are really starting to fire up. We've got moderate snow from northern Texas into central Oklahoma, all the way back up into Nebraska. And once again, here's that 522 line, okay? So we're talking about extreme cold up here. So even though it's not snowing heavily here in Kansas and Nebraska, Alaska, a lot of snow is going to pile up because none of it is going to melt. And then let's keep pushing this into motion. Watch the cold air slams down here into the Texas-Mexico border. It's also getting smushed up along our boundary where all of our moisture is coming in. One of the problems we may see with this is that this moisture goes so far deep close to that boundary that a lot of it gets eaten up by the warmer air and our precipitation shield isn't as large. Originally, we were thinking about a pretty large precipitation shield that moved to the north and east, bringing a large swath of over six inches to this area right here. Now, the closer we get to the storm, it looks like that area may be smaller, but it's too soon to tell. Let's keep putting this into motion. We got heavy snow now working into Dallas, Fort Worth, Oklahoma City. Now it's moving into Arkansas. 1 a.m. on Monday, February 15th, we're dealing with a sleet storm and a half in Louisiana, Arkansas, up through Tennessee and Texas. There will probably be multiple instances of thunder sleet here. And then as I push this a little bit further into motion, watch how much of that cold air is sinking all the way down into Mexico. Uh, once again, this will be record-breaking cold. Depending on how old you are, it'll be probably the coldest air you felt in your life in some of these areas over here. In fact, we set a record in northeastern Minnesota earlier today at negative 50 degrees. Negative 50 degrees. So a little bit of that is going to try to come down here, and it is going to get close to our precipitation shield. That's why we're thinking the higher snow ratios are going to allow for some major snowfall totals from Texas all the way up into the northeast. But one of the problems with this sudden emergence of cold air that really tries to squeeze down this far 
are is that it squeezes out the moisture as well. Uh, initially, at this time, the storm was still supposed to be producing some light to moderate snow in northern Texas and Oklahoma, but now it looks like a lot of that precip is moving to the east. It's going to be concentrated in the form of heavy snow and sleet here in Arkansas. But let's put this a little bit forward. There is a secondary injection of moisture from the Gulf right here around 1 p.m. tomorrow, and we're dealing with extremely heavy ice in Mississippi, heavy sleet in Mississippi, Louisiana, and this ice and sleet goes all the way up into Tennessee and Kentucky. Uh, these people are going to get hit again, man. Like uh, some areas in central Kentucky got some pretty bad ice the other day, and now we're looking at the potential for that to happen again. Just to the north, we're talking about some pretty heavy to moderate snows from Paducah, Kentucky, Evansville, Indiana, Cincinnati, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, maybe even Indianapolis. Uh, this area right here that's that's in the heavy snow bands, you guys are going to see a lot of snow from this, okay? And then as we push this a little bit further into motion, as you can see, that heavy snow still occurring all the way back here in western Tennessee and northeastern Arkansas, still going on in Louisville, Kentucky, Cincinnati, now into Cleveland and moving into Pittsburgh. And it turns into heavy snow once we get into northwestern Pennsylvania there. It's going to be like kind of like a one-two punch. As you can see, there's that first one, and here comes the second one with some of that heavy snow working into upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. With that heavy sleet and freezing rain working into south central and southeastern Pennsylvania, northern Jersey, and then into Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts uh, before we're all set and done, according to the NAM here. Who's in Snowtown, baby? Who is it today? Okay, as we zoom into the south central area of the United States, we're looking at this band right here being our target area for the heaviest snows from the initialization of this storm. Amarillo, Woodland, Oklahoma. You guys, a lot of this snow is going to be coming from light to moderate snow that falls over a period of time during extreme cold temperatures, below zero temperatures. Um, six inches of snow can pile up pretty quickly, even if it's not snowing at a really good clip because of how cold it's going to be. Um, so that's why I believe, uh, you know, four to eight inches is possible around here. Four to eight inches of snow broadly, anywhere in here, it can get four to eight inches of snow easily with uh, with some areas getting six to 12 inches of snow. And once again, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if some people, especially in Oklahoma down here, got a little bit more than 12 inches of snow over a foot, which once again would be a huge shutdown storm for Oklahoma. Now, I know we got a lot of people watching from Oklahoma and Texas. I always say consult your local National Weather Service for the most accurate weather data. But if you do want to know what my forecast is, I have made a detailed forecast map showing exactly how much snow I think is going to fall here and also for the Northeast and Ohio Valley. If you're a member of the channel, you can check that out right now on the community tab. I just posted it after this video went up. But long story short, I do kind of agree with what the NAM is saying here. However, the placement of this band may be a little bit different once we get to where we're actually going. Okay, let's talk about the Ohio Valley in the east now. There's a little bit of a transfer of energy here down to the Gulf that's going to allow for a secondary induction of moisture to happen here for the Ohio River Valley up to points northeast. This is why there's another area here of increased totals, and this one may be even more intense than the one we see down in Oklahoma. Once again, a broad area of four to eight inches is possible all the way through here with another embedded area of six to 12 inches. And there's definitely gonna be some areas from northeastern Ohio, extreme northwestern Pennsylvania, northern New York up into Vermont. There's gonna be some areas in here that definitely see more than a foot of snow from this. Pittsburgh, you're right there. You know, you're definitely gonna be in Snowtown, baby, but I don't know if you're gonna get over a foot just yet. It is possible though. Once again, guys, if you want to see my forecast map, I just do it for fun. You can see that if you become a member of the channel, there's a link in the description and a button next to the subscribe button. But once again, I do pretty much agree with what the NAM is saying here. Heaviest snows are going to be from northwestern Ohio points north and east with a concentration here on the Ohio River Valley, right around Cincinnati, Louisville, Paducah, Evansville. I would not be surprised at all if Cincinnati ended up with a foot of snow, if Louisville ended up with 10 inches, or even way back here in, in Paducah, if they ended ended up with eight, nine inches of snow. It's another one of those things we, we're going to be now casting, okay? I'm definitely going to be live streaming during this event, and we'll watch as everything rolls out, and, and, and we'll see what happens. Now, here's the sucky part of this storm. It does look like there's going to be another uh, pretty bad ice storm that uh, unfolds with this. I believe most of this over here is coming from what we're seeing on radar right now. The area we're focusing on is this right here, okay? Um, eastern Kentucky, northeastern Kentucky, all the way through central Kentucky, much of central uh, Tennessee, including the Nashville area, northwestern Alabama, much of central Mississippi, all the way down to the coast of Louisiana, a, uh, a pretty uh, serious situation unfolding as a crippling ice storm may happen, um, especially in the southern areas down here. Some of these higher totals, an inch, an inch of ice down here in southwestern 
Mississippi would be absolutely uh, devastating for the area. Whenever you start talking about over a half inch of ice, that's where it gets dangerous. That's where you can almost certainly see widespread power outages, widespread tree damage, and road blockages. If the ground temperature gets low enough, travel becomes almost impossible, um, at, even after you get a quarter inch of ice, uh, because you can't drive on ice. But yes, I know a lot of people in Kentucky are already prepared because we just went through an ice storm. But you guys down to the south here from Louisiana through Mississippi up into central Tennessee, make sure you prepare now for the worst because this is ice town, baby. You don't want to be in ice town. All right, let's take a look at the GFS. Here's our big storm coming down from the Pacific Northwest. That's going to bowling ball dive right into Texas, getting squeezed down from our lobe of the polar vortex there. This looks very similar to the NAM, but what I've noticed is it's actually a little bit more uh, bullish on the likelihood of a one-two punch happening over here in the Ohio Valley where that first area of moisture comes up and, and disconnects from the main storm system over here. So watch this as it comes through. There's punch one, punch two. And once again, what does this mean for Texas and Oklahoma? Well, it means that you're probably not going to see 20 inches of snow from this storm like some TV meteorologists were talking about five, like what was it, three days ago? <laughs> hey, you guys know me. I don't mind the hype. I actually enjoy it. But that was, that was kind of like, what? What? Uh, the GFS is actually more south with the precipitation, with the frozen precipitation. So we're seeing sleet all the way down into Houston, Texas, possibility of some heavy snow showers uh, south of Austin, Texas. And then there's that Gulf effect snow. <laughs> I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So let's watch it go over Texas and Oklahoma again. Okay, now all that moisture gets smushed against our boundary, kind of fans out here. And now, or really our main area of concern is going to get a second induction of moisture as it heads up to the northeast. And it's going to be heavy snow. Uh, for central Kentucky now, according to this run of the GFS, this is the 12Z run. Uh, this is a little bit more south and east. The ice moves a little bit more to the east. The snow is, you know, more likely in eastern Ohio, according to the GFS. And then that still hammers Pittsburgh and then upstate New York and it looks like a pretty bad ice storm for Scranton, Pennsylvania into the Berkshire area of Massachusetts and southern New Hampshire and maybe even the coast of Maine dealing with some ice uh, but it's all heavy snow north of that. Let's watch the full progression of that storm again. There it is and there it goes. Okay, here's them snow totals, bub. The GFS sees that transfer of energy um, happening way earlier than the NAM. Um, however, it greatly intensifies this band of snow in uh, for Pittsburgh, Columbus, Cleveland, Syracuse, Albany, you know, this is snow town baby and a half for you. Even down here in the Cincinnati, maybe even Lexington, Kentucky getting in on some action. This is also great news for people in Northwest Alabama, Western Tennessee and Northwest Mississippi and Louisiana. This is saying snow for you more than ice. Still showing a very, very significant snowstorm for Oklahoma with a lot of areas getting over eight inches of snow. Whenever the GFS sees that moisture really slamming into our boundary down here, it's putting an area of six inches or more really close to Austin and Houston. We're here in eastern Texas, this would be absolutely insane if we saw that verify. However, remember, we're looking at the Cuchera ratio here because we're mainly concerned about back here where it's going to be below zero temperatures while it's snowing. Um, that 10 to 1 ratio doesn't seem to work out very well. However, when we're really close to that boundary, it won't be 30 to 1, it won't be 20 to 1. Uh, we may be looking at 15 to 1 ratios down here, so this might be a little bit overdone in southeastern Texas. However, I still believe 3 to 6 inches is very possible for you guys. Lubbock, Texas, Amarillo, Texas, 11 to 12, 13 inches of snow, it's possible. But look at this breaking up here in Arkansas, in this area right here. <laughs> This area actually has seen significantly less snow than what they normally do for this time of year. So similar to the DC snow hole over here, this wouldn't surprise me at all if, <laughs> if this verified. But boy, oh boy, wouldn't we like to see this in Pittsburgh? This is showing 15, 16 inches of snow for you guys. And uh, yeah, just beautiful and a sharp cutoff line. If you are in central Pennsylvania and you got, you know, 15, 16 inches of snow and you want to take a trip down to York, Pennsylvania or Philadelphia, and they've got nothing but cold rain, maybe a little bit of ice. Okay, last but not least, we're going to take a look at the Euro. Let's put this into motion. There's our storm in Texas and Oklahoma, and actually this looks a little bit more intense on the Euro. As you can see, we've got some heavier snows here in Oklahoma, right through the Red River area, and it's showing it's sticking around a little bit longer, and it's not smushing into this boundary as quickly as what the GFS shows, and that precip shield gets to stay a little bit further back. But look, here's that separation on one, two, punch. There's punch one. Punch two is looking intense for Northwest. Western Mississippi, Western Tennessee, Western Kentucky, Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, Southern Ohio. Oh my goodness, this right here would be a blockbuster storm. This would be absolutely insane for Western Kentucky. And then that moves into uh, Pit the Pittsburgh area, and you're talking about an absolutely incredible snowstorm there. Uh, but, but look at that ice. 
that is not a good sign. That's showing a really bad ice storm for the Philadelphia area all the way down into the panhandles of West Virginia and Maryland. And then that is also showing ice for Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. But man, the second punch of this storm on the Euro is really strong. We have a, you know, it's not a crazy low pressure system. It's a 1,004 millibar uh, low going up the Appalachian Mountains, uh, but it's really kicking that cold air down with it, and it's bringing up a lot of moisture, so our precip shield is a little bit more intense here. We're going to see some very intense snow totals from this run, I do believe, especially in the northeast. Let's check that out now. Okay, let's take a look at those snowfall totals on the Euro here, and wow. The Euro says bam for Oklahoma, Texas, especially into the Ohio Valley in northeast. This is uh, wow. This just keeps getting more and more interesting. Okay, so this is once again the 12Z Euro. This is the freshest data we've looked at today. So the Euro is a little bit more intense up here in uh, West Central Oklahoma, Northern Texas. I mean, we've got that tongue that comes all the way down close to Austin, Texas with over six inches of snow. Absolutely insane if that pans out. The 18Z data continues to show this, um, especially on the NAM. If the NAM starts co correcting to this, this little tongue feature right here, I'm going to have to change my forecast away from focusing on this precip shield and really Really transferring that energy over into this area and look at that for the east man we're talking about the whole state of Ohio just getting buried in snow talk about a memorable snowstorm for uh, Cincinnati Dayton Columbus Co uh, Cleveland uh, also everybody in Indiana over here is over a foot almost southern Illinois this would be this would be a massive uh, memorable storm for everybody in this area right here so there's a lot of things that we still have to look through and I cannot wait to now cast this live here on this channel. Once again, if you want to see my personal forecast maps, that's going to be a members only thing. I love the little sub community we have there and remember all of the proceeds from that are going to science. Okay. We're going storm chasing. We're going to get some magnificent footage and we're building tornado probes and we're going to, we're going to collect data and your membership funds. That's where that's going. So yeah, exciting times. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn notifications on so you can watch tomorrow tomorrow's video because tomorrow's video is really where we're going to nail it down. I'm going to try to post that video super early while the storm's initializing and then we may go live tomorrow evening. I'll talk about that in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. That's all I got for you. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Rip